Hello, this is Nikolai Markovich from Echo Lake Technologies, echolaketech.com. And this is the uh, fifth in our series of videos on creating a uh, calendar app. And in this one, what we're going to do is actually uh, a little bit of cleanup before we go in and um, add a repeating group so that the clients can go and see a list of all the available um, uh, opening slots. Uh, so the first thing I actually want to do is come to the data field for the calendar events and I want to create um, duration. And this is basically going to be uh, of type number. It's um, basically going to allow uh, the client to go and see the available time slots based on their duration, a one hour time slot, a two hour time slot, and, and so forth. And back here when we go and create the event in this workflow, so we're actually going to come here and do duration, and then duration is going to be the end times value minus the start times value and then format as hours. So then this way what it'll do is if um, the start time is 1 o'clock, uh, end time is 2 o'clock, it's going to do 2 minus 1 to give you a one hour duration and put that in the database. Um, so that is that. The other thing I want to do is since these um, uh, are available time slots, I'm actually going to uh, remove this here because it's not really needed. Just kind of clean this up a little bit. Like that. And it's really great um, time slot. Like that. And I'm just going to do a little bit more house cleaning here. Great time slot like that. And let's look at these errors. They're probably within the workflow like that. Yeah, so we'll get rid of that. Since we're no longer um, using that input. Um, good. Actually, a little bit more house cleaning. Um, on here, so the event name here, we're just going to delete that, no longer needed. Alright, so that is that. So now um, when the event is created, um, we can go and show actually, yeah. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to add a repeating group and what this will allow is the client to go and see um, the available time slots. Actually, make that two. Um, the available time slots um, in a um, repeating group, so just a list of the um, the events. I'm going to do a search for calendar events. And then we are going to go and where it is empty like that. Okay. Now what we'll do is we'll add a little bit of text in here. And let's see, let's put in the um, start time, end time, duration, like that. And then for the start time, current cells, because we're in the current cell, start time. And then similarly, the end time. We're in the current cell still, and the end time. And then the duration is going to be duration, and um, what 
I'm going to do is put hours just so that your user, your client knows that it is in hours. And again, just do a little bit of aesthetics here to help signify the values. There, just like that. All right, now this will show all of the um, uh, the different um, events that are available uh, in the repeating group. And what I want to do now is add a drop down. And what this will allow um, is the ability for the uh, your client to go in and um, do a search for the events um, based on move this here based on the duration. So what we can do here is instead of static choices, so static choices I could type in the durations here like that, but since it's going to be dynamic based on the different durations, um, what we're going to have here is um, type of choices. Um, it's actually going to be a number, and then we're going to do a search here for calendar events. And again, the constraint is going to be similar to um, what we had earlier. Um, that email is empty. Uh, let's keep going here. And then what we want is duration, like that. And then what we want is because uh, you will be creating a lot of events and that you might have a dozen one-hour events, we only want to show one um, of those one hour events in here. So how we do that is we go and we scroll down to unique of unique elements. So basically what this will do is again if you have a dozen different one hour events in um, that are available this will do a search for those and then it's only going to show one of those one hour events. If you had three two hour events it's only going to show uh, one of those in the pop-up. And we'll, we'll see that in, in a few more moments here. All right, so now actually what we want to do um, is come back over to the, um, to the repeating group and we want to go and uh, add, a, add a filter. And basically, but before I do that, drop down A, so drop down duration, What we want to do is come back over here in the calendar events and we want to filter on these. And basically we want to filter by the duration. Like that, not a constraint. And then the duration equals the drop down duration value. All right, so what this is basically going to do is um, when the user, your client goes in and uh, chooses one of the durations here, that'll apply a filter on here and will only show those um, events that are available uh, for that duration. Now we should be all set. There's no warnings or errors. So what I'm going to do is come over here and let's create some events. All right, so let's create create an event. There's one there, and you can see it automatically shows up. Now let's uh, create another one on here, and let's make this one one o'clock. Let's make this a two-hour duration. Create event like that. Now you can see the repeating group automatically updates. You can see the start times, end times, and now the durations as well. Now if you come over here and you do a choose, you can see the one and the two. So those are the durations. I'm going to choose two and then only the two hour slot. One. 
and then we can get all of them as well. Uh, just to show you an example, I'm going to create another one hour event. So I've got one, two, another one hour event, and on here it only shows one instead of a one and a one. So this is a nice slick way um, in Bubble to go and show, use a pop down and do some filtering for the events. Um, now what we want to do though is we want to allow our, um, actually, let's go to, see what it looks like in here. So again, we've got our, I'm not logged in here, this is a uh, incognito screen here, so the user is not logged in. Um, but again, they have, they can filter and so forth, and then they can click on one, and they can go and reserve a time slot. But what I want to do is a couple of little house clean things here. I actually want, because I'm logged in here as, as the primary owner of the, uh, of the uh, calendar, I don't want to see these. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the conditional. So when current user is not logged in, I want to make this visible. I'm going to copy that. All right. I'm going to do the same thing over here, and I can I copied. So what I did was I, I right clicked or, or double mouse clicked on a, a Mac here to copy the condition, and I'm just going to paste this condition over here like that, so I don't have to type the whole thing in again. Now I do need to come over here, and this is not going to be visible on page load, and this is not going to be visible on page load. Good. So now when I so again, this is my logged in account here. When I load it, it's not going to show up. But when I am over here, it will still show up. Perfect. Now what I want to actually do is move this over a little bit. And I'm going to come over here. And I do want to take a look at the duration. And I want to take a look at the repeating group. Now I do want to add this a little bit bigger. I want to add a button to reserve this time, reserve time. Okay, that looks okay. And then what I want to do here is I actually want to go and I need to send the data to display the data and it's going to go to the request a time slot and it's going to be the current cell's calendar event. So basically it's taking the information from that current cell, it's going to send that information to the pop-up. And then I need to go and show the pop-up. Like that. Okay, let's take a look. Now there shouldn't be any changes on here. Okay, and that looks good. And on here, now you see the reserve time slot. So when I click on this, I should get a pop-up. So appointment name, I'll just call this test. And this is our friend Joe. Joe Tester. Joe22.test.com. Phone number. This is a test. Oops. Did I not do that right? I guess I guess I had a comma. And there. Now you see there's only two available time slots here. And if you see here, you can see it's test. Now what I'm going to do is Oops. I am going to go and clean this up for uh, the account owners so that they have more complete information. Uh, the other thing in an upcoming video, I'm going to show how to send an email to both the um, person, the client signing up, as well as the uh, calendar uh, owner uh, so that they get notifications of the event. 
So thank you for watching this video. Um, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or comments, please uh, leave it in, a, in the section below. And again, I appreciate your, your time. Thank you.